All right, hello everybody. Eric Marks here again with FindingMiddleEarth.com, and today I'm just gonna um, basically post-process a photo and let you watch uh, how I do it. Um, there's a lot of photos um, that I've been posting recently from my trip to Disney World and Universal Studios, and there's a lot of videos I've been posting um, about just you know kind of obscure things just to see what works and what you guys might like. And uh, the thing that I keep hearing the most. <laughs> is um you know we want how how do you make you know your photos look like this how do you get disney world photos to look you know like they have this magical glow and how do you get the lights to look like that you know all these all these different things so i'm just going to start releasing videos um and let you guys watch how i post process my photos um i'm an open book i am not at all uh in the way of believing that you know i have some secret way of doing things and uh, you know, I'm going to keep it bundled up forever and never let anybody know it. Because if you do um, live like that and look at photography like that, then you are setting yourself up for failure. Because the second uh, one other person, you know, finds out that secret that you have that makes you this grand photographer, um, you know, according to you, your career will be over. So don't keep secrets, you know, be an open book, have fun. Photography is all about creating uh, unique stuff. And, you know, it, the reason I let you guys watch me edit these photos is because I'm going to post process this photo the way that I want to do it. The colors are going to look the way I want them to look. I'm only going to stop when I'm satisfied. You might post-process a completely different way. So keep in mind that as I'm doing this, I'm not at all telling you that this is the way to post-process your photos. This is just the way I do it, and I love doing it this way. If you want to do it this way, you're more than welcome to do that. But I encourage you to find your own path and your own kind of unique style of processing photos. So without further ado, let's jump in here to Adobe Lightroom. And... I've already highlighted the photo here. So basically, uh, this was the raw photo that I took while in Magic Kingdom. And as you can see from the raw photo, which this is the first time I think I will have ever shown a raw photo um, with you know absolutely no editing done whatsoever from, from my Disney work. Um, and the reason I want to show everybody this is because I want you to see that the park really is this empty. You know, I, I don't spend hours in Photoshop taking people out of my photos. If you zoom in, there really is like almost nobody here. You can see a couple of people standing over here and over here uh, by the Ferris wheel. And I mean, not Ferris wheel, the carousel. And um, a couple people over here. But I mean, for the most part, the park is pretty darn empty. Um, you can see no one by the castle. There's no one over here. Um, there's just certain research you can do when you when you go to these theme parks um, for you know extended hours for people that stay on Disney property and certain nights that they're going to be open late. So just do that kind of research when you get to these places, and that will um, absolutely help you get access to do things like this and to get pictures like this. So um, anyway, we're going to take this shot here, and when we're done with it, it's going to look something like this because I have already post-processed this photo. So this is going to be your after and your before, and your after and before. So you can see quite a big difference, but all I did was just enhance what was already there. So this is how it looked to the human eye. Everything was glowing because it was nighttime. It was, you know, all the colors were popping. Um, but I personally, I have my camera set on a mode that captures everything as flat as possible so that I can go and work with it and kind of bend the light to my will back when I am post-processing these photos. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's get out of this. I'm going to, I've already done... Um, basic edits on this, just some, you know, contrast and uh, added exposure, and you can see I've done a little bit of sharpening, a little bit of noise reduction, just some basic stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, export this, and we're going to export it. I have all these presets. You can see here I have a preset that's uh, commercial portfolio, fine art prints, online publishing, and then I have one called pure imagination, and that is the one where I um, basically export a um, just basic edited photo and then um, kind of in its preform ready to be worked on in Photoshop to be finished and all the magic to be done on it. The reason I call it pure imagination, by the way, is because I'm a, a huge fan of Willy Wonka 
and his song in that movie that he sings, you know, Pure Imagination, is just one of my favorites. It's just, the movie is a classic, the song is a classic, so um, I thought that was a good name for the preset, because it's, the post-processing process, if you will, is quite a bit of imagination mixed with creativity. It's kind of, um, you know, it's all up here in the head. So um, let's go ahead and open this up in Photoshop. And I'll show you basically what I did. So first things first, I think the photo needs to be cropped because I don't like um, this extra ground here in front of the reflection. I think we need to kind of tighten the composition up a little bit. Uh, so let's do something like that. And we can probably bring this in a tad as well. And I can probably bring this in to here maybe. Um, just to kind of tighten things up just a bit. Maybe we'll keep that flag in there. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Um, yeah, that would we'll make it a little bit more of a panorama type composition. Um, okay. So first things first, I want the colors to pop a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unlock this layer and then duplicate it by hitting Command J on my keyboard. Um, and I'm gonna hit Shift Command A on my keyboard and it'll open up the camera raw app um, or plugin rather inside of Photoshop and if you have Photoshop CC you can do this and this was like one of the most awesome plugins to make in my opinion so for this I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna make the vibrance pop a lot more so you can see what it's doing to the colors if you kinda watch I'm gonna make the vibrance pop saturation I'm gonna go down on the clarity, up on the contrast, raise the exposure a little bit, raise the shadows a little bit, down on the highlights, and then finish it up with a little bit of noise reduction here. Okay, so what you what I just did there was basically go overboard on the color just a little bit, and uh, I'm gonna raise the exposure even a little more, and you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. So I'm gonna go and hit OK, and you can see what I did. So this is the before, and this is after before after okay so the reason I did this is because I'm gonna go ahead and take this top layer which I just uh, made those adjustments to there and I'm going to add a blur filter to it so I am gonna do Gaussian blur there and I'm gonna blur it yeah I guess 27 and a half pixels is okay and now just so you know whenever you blur um, and what I'm about to do is blend this layer this blurry layer to the bottom whenever you blur a photo it darkens it whenever you blend it to a layer so that's why I raised the exposure I think I raised it like a, a stop and a half. So whenever you're going to blur a layer and then blend it to the bottom one using these blending modes, always raise the exposure because it will um, it will darken the photo. So I'm going to go ahead and do multiply. It's typically the one that, that works best. And you can see the crazy effect that it just gave to that. And even then, even with the exposure lift, look how dark it made everything. So what I'm going to do is uh, rock the opacity slider over here. Get that going on. And we will just kind of ease up there a little bit on the uh, effect that it's having on this layer. So let's take that to maybe around 50% opacity. That looks good. Uh, maybe a little more. Let's go like 60. Yeah, okay, like around 60. And then I'm going to take this uh, tool here, and I'm going to hit E on my keyboard, which is going to bring up the eraser tool. And we're going to make sure my hardness is all the way down, which means it's a big, soft brush and we're gonna paint some of that blur out of kind of the, in my opinion, what would be the key um, subjects in this photograph. And so I would think obviously the, what would be a given to me, the key would be um, the castle. And sorry, I'm taking the, this is the opacity of the uh, eraser tool here. So I'm gonna take that to like 30, which is basically how much of this layer it's going to erase. So if you went to 100, it would erase 100% of this layer. But I'm just going to erase 30 of the blur and kind of tighten that up around the castle. And I'm going to erase the blur around this uh, sign here. And I'm going to make the, um, oh, whoops. I'm going to make the uh, carousel a little less blurry here. And we'll make the reflection and just a little bit of this. That way we, you know, we kind of have a good mixture, right? So there's that. Let's go ahead and we're going to duplicate this again and hit Shift Command A again. And this time I'm going to do basically uh, the same process, except this time I'm going to mess with the white balance a little bit. So it's it's a little warm right now. I'm going to go a little colder and go like minus 12. Raise the exposure again. All right. 
going to go, this time I think I'm going to boost the clarity a tad. Let's boost the clarity. Uh, okay, actually, I'm, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to boost the color first again. It's really, really honing on that color. I like that. Um, and let's go opposite on clarity so we can get that glow effect. You see the glow that that's making in the carousel over here? Uh, let me go to the clarity again. You see how it's just making everything really, you know, glow nicely. And so what I'm going to do is make these adjustments here, right? Hit OK. And you can see here, if I turn on, that's what I did. So that's before with that, you know, blurred layer blended there. And turning it on, that's the new uh, thing that we just did. But I don't want it to affect the entire image. So what I'm going to do is hold the Option key on my keyboard and click this Mask tool. If I do that, it's going to create a mask for me to just paint in the selections that I want. Now, uh, normally I do have a little uh, Wacom tablet that I use to paint this in, so it's like a very natural, you know, almost like a paintbrush stroke. It's a little graphics tablet that I paint in. Uh, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to keep it simple and just do it with the mouse, because you can do it with the mouse. You don't have to have a graphics tablet, but it's just, uh, it's more natural that way to take the, the paintbrush strokes and, and very finely, you know, draw in your details. So um, I'm going to click over here and make sure my mask is, uh, let's see, make sure my layer mask, oh, what's going on here, uh, there we go, uh, white, okay, so what was the problem was, let me back up so you know what my problem was, so I was trying to paint in my uh, details that I wanted there, let me select the mask, and it wasn't working because the uh, color of the mask over here was black. We need to make sure it's white. And so if I'm painting in white, it's going to work. See, it's painting in my details now. So always make sure that your brush over here is the opposite color than it is over here in the mask. So if this is a black mask over here, you need to be painting in white and then vice versa. So I was just made a stupid error and uh, painted black on black. So let's go ahead and paint in our details now. And remember, we're painting in that like really soft blur, um, glowy effect. So I'm going to take the opacity of this brush down to hmm, maybe, let's say, 45 or so. I'll make it a big, nice, soft brush. Uh, hardness is very, very soft, zero hardness. And we'll just paint some of this in. So you see how you can already see how it's making this carousel pop a little more. We'll paint some in on the castle. And that way we're not actually, remember, we're not painting in blur. We're just painting in uh, minus clarity. So it's just, it's not really blurring the image. It's just kind of softening the highlights. So let's keep painting that in a little bit. We'll paint in here just a tad. Make the brush smaller. Paint in this. Good little bit of the reflection there. You can see kind of this path right here uh, that's been drawn with this little line in the concrete. And I like that. It's a little leading line that goes straight to the castle. So let's paint that little line. Paint that in. Very good. Okay, I like that. Okay, so now we can just select this layer and select the bottom layer. Hit Command E on my keyboard. Then I'll merge them into one layer and get rid of all the mess. Um, and that's looking really good already. So let's go ahead and do the same process again. We're going to Command-J, duplicate the layer, open it back up in Camera Raw, and see what else we can do with this. Let's make it a little colder again. I, don't, I still want it to be just a tad colder. Let's add some pinks. Just a, Yeah, there we go. Get the pinks back in, because pink is what kind of makes it that very ethereal color. Uh, add some contrast. Uh, take away some highlights. Open up the shadows just a bit. Uh, let's see, we'll crush the blacks just a tad. There we go. We'll add a little bit of clarity this time. Again with the vibrance, again with the saturation. Maybe a little colder even still. All right, starting to look good. I like it. And again, a before and after. So look how much better it's already getting. Because you can see this one's got kind of a gross green and yellow tint to it. And then this one, what we just did, is starting to add that beautiful color back in. So yeah, I like that. So let's maybe do that about 90% opacity. And then we will uh, shift select those together into one layer. And we're almost done. And so my, uh, just kind of the, you know, um, last 
bit I would do here just to make everything kind of perfect and tidy up everything. You can see because I was using a wide angle lens over here where it says Mickey's Philhar Magic, you can see this huge thing here in the air is uh, it's kind of bowed and it's being bent in. Whereas in reality, it was straight and pointing straight up in the air over here. You can even see the, the uh, top of the carousel here is even bowed inward. Uh, and this this can and this is very common. This can happen when you're using a wide angle lens because you'll you'll zoom all the way out to get a very wide angle, and the edges of the wide angle lens will be so wide that it'll kind of bow the corners in a little bit. And you've probably seen a more extreme version of something like that happen if you've ever used a GoPro camera. How everything there's like no straight lines. All the straight lines are kind of bowed. So this isn't nearly that bad, but sometimes when you're using these kind of wide angle lenses, even the $2,000 ones like I was using, it's kind of frustrating really if you pay two grand for a lens and you, you know, bow the corners, but it does happen. So there is a cool fix for it in here. So I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to go to um, edit and uh, transform and warp. And this is kind of the coolest thing. Uh, one of the coolest things you can do to a photo in here. So basically you can warp the photo and fix all of the alignments in here. So first let's work on this carousel, uh, the top of this carousel here. So you can see I'm actually bending the carousel back towards the straight. Uh, there we go, towards the straight line to the side here. And let's see, bend it just a little more. And we'll raise it. And you got to be, um, yeah, this is all, you're doing this all by eye because you got to be a little careful to make sure you don't ruin the rest of the photo. So as I'm doing this, I'm watching everything to make sure I'm not making, you know, other parts of the photo look really funky. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to see, uh, yeah, so that's pointing directly straight up at the top of the photo. So we're going to leave that side and I'm going to go over here. Now this one's going to be a little harder to fix because it's just really bowed in to the right, or I'm sorry, to the left. So let's go straight as we can with this one. Let's move this side. We'll have to pull it down a little bit, make it look a little more normal. A little bit, pull it down. All right. And then you can see what it's done to the castle. It's messed up the castle, so we have to pull the castle back in. Just a bit. Smooth this little line here. Right. Okay, keep pulling the castle. It's kind of like a, a game of tug of war here. Um, all right, so almost there with the castle. Let's zoom in and see how we are with our lines. Castle looks good. Um, and this looks about as good as we're going to get it, which is a lot better than it was. So uh, I think I'm going to leave it like that. Maybe I'll, I might bend it just a little tad more. Let's grab this guy here and just, just a tad. And then we'll bring that back a tad again. Uh, let's see, bring it down. So you can see you have to be very meticulous with this kind of stuff to make sure it doesn't warp the rest of the photo. Uh, OK. Cool. So when you're done, you just hit enter and it locks in all of your adjustments. And now let's look at the before and after of that. So that's before and after, before and after. Isn't that crazy looking how it's just, it's so warped, but it looks better. It just, in my opinion, like if someone were to buy a print of this from me, it's 10 times better to have your, all of your lines as vertical, um, as vertically aligned as possible. Um, just for, you know, if you're going to frame it, all these straight lines that come into framing it and hanging it even on the wall, that's when these bowing verticals really start to stand out when someone buys a print from you for hundreds of dollars, even thousands of dollars. They get this big frame, put it on a wall, and then they notice the picture's kind of, you know, lopsided. So we don't want that. Um, okay, so that should be about it. I mean, I'm I'm really happy with that. Let's uh, merge. Now, let's, now I'm going to show you something. So if I turn this bottom layer off, which is the before layer, you'll see what happened when we warped the photo. It actually cut some of the photo off because of, so there's just nothing but, you know, just blank dead pixels in here. So what we need to do is to do another crop so that we can tidy that up. So we'll crop down to that. You can also do a, like a fill content aware if you want to try that. Um, which is basically just letting Photoshop decide what it wants to put in the blank spot, but I'm fine just doing some cropping. I shot this with a 
36 megapixel camera with a uh, Nikon D810, so I'm not worried about cropping in just a little bit. Okay, so that is beautiful. I'm digging that. So let's go ahead and merge these layers together now that we've done our crop. And that is it. That is the uh, Disney castle and carousel just after it rains photo completed. And let's do a quick zoom in for what I call like my quality control check. I just kind of check for sensor spots or, you know, any kind of dust on the camera lens or anything. And, you know, I, I would um, I would probably spend another 10, 15 minutes just cleaning up some of this, just some of the stuff on the ground, you know, just some of these footprints I'd probably get rid of. And uh, I'd probably try to, to clone stamp out this garbage can and just, you know, little stuff like that. But that's just uh, stuff that anyone can do with enough time and patience. But this is, you know, the basic... Um, way that that I post process my stuff now this isn't uh, an HDR I, I nine times out of ten I shoot three photos um, three five seven or nine photos and I blend them together I like I was telling you when I had my uh, when I have my graphics tablet my Wacom tablet with my paintbrush I'll just I'll take like I said three five seven or nine photos and I'll I'll take them all at separate exposures to where one's you know medium exposure dark bright and blend it all together into this beautiful looking photo like this um, and I'll just I'll just paint through masks you know for like an hour just painting through and getting my exposure perfect but with this photo I didn't have much time um, they were kind of forcing everyone out of the park so I just set up a, a quick 30 second exposure in one shot and it turned out well I mean I, I didn't um, I got enough data I wish I would have had more of the sky in there because normally I do like a, a 30 second for all of this in the park and then I'll do like a three or four minute exposure to get some uh, some you know blur in the clouds or some uh, star trails or something. But this uh, particular night was really cloudy and stormy and it wouldn't have done much. So it all worked out. Um, I was happy with this one photo. But uh, so many people commented on this one and wanted to know how I gave it this look. And now you know. It, it really did look like this. There's no Photoshop gimmicks to it. It's really just taking the light that was already there and bending it to your own creativity and uh, your own imagination. So I hope this helped everyone. I'm going to keep releasing these kind of videos uh, quite often now that I, I get so many comments about you know people wanting to know how I do this. So I will see you guys in the next video and have a Merry Christmas. Thanks. Thank you all so much for watching my videos every week. If you guys want to get notified every single time I release a new video, just click the big subscribe button below and we can get to know each other. You can also check out my blog at findingmiddleearth.com. And if you want to hit me up on social media, all my info is right over here. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one.